Good morning everybody, this is Stephen Pugh of the Home Bible College. It's April the 18th and we're looking at John chapter 6 today. And let's run through these passages and then I'll tell you what my password for the day is. <coughs> the first passage is the feeding of the 5,000. And this is the sixth sign in John's Gospel and it 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 reminds us of the ministry and the um, the ministry of David, David the Old Testament um, king, and, and the Lord Jesus is portrayed here as greater than David. Um, it's David who took five loaves from Ahab, Ahab, Abathar um, to feed his men, and it's the Lord Jesus that takes five loaves and feeds the five thousand people. We won't go into all of the details, but you'll notice that this is a miracle which is in all of the four Gospels. Um, not everything that's mentioned in the life of Christ is recorded in all of the four Gospels, but there are certain things that are, and when they are, then they're crucial. They're very important. Um, they're very important passages, and this is a very important passage because it demonstrates that the Lord Jesus is the King of Israel because it is the King of Israel who feeds all the people. You remember just the other day we were looking at David when he brought the ark back into Jerusalem and he was able to give a piece of bread to every man and woman in the whole nation. And so the Lord Jesus is able to feed all those that come to him uh, to hear him and to be disciples of his and he feeds them all <clears throat> and at the very end of the passage it says this Jesus perceived that they would come and take him by force to make him king see the point you see the point of this miracle is that anyone that can feed the whole nation is the one that they will take as king but he departed into a mountain himself alone the very next thing that happens is that the Lord Jesus um, visits the disciples on the water and uh, from verse 16 onwards we have a, a separate section in John's Gospel where we have the rejection of Jesus Christ um, but it begins with this passage that the disciples were on the sea and entered into a ship and went over toward Capernaum and it was dark and Jesus was not yet come to them and so this is the this is the circumstance that Israel would be in today they rejected the Lord Jesus as king and they at the moment are on Gentile waters and the wind is against them and Jesus is absent and so in our present world today, this is exactly where the Lord Jesus is. He's absent from his ancient people. He's with his father in heaven, but he's coming back. And when he comes back, he's going to walk upon the waters of this world. He won't be affected by the politics of this world. He will walk upon them, but he will come to be with his people. And when they welcome him into the boat, they will discover that they are at their destination that they've struggled for for so long. And then the following day, when the people stood on the other side of the saw and the on the other side of the the sea, and they saw that uh, there was no other boats except the one that the disciples had entered. Now they knew that the Lord Jesus had gone into the mountain, and they knew that the disciples had left in the boat. And they were asking the question, how did Jesus arrive in the boat? But that question is never addressed. Um, <clears throat> and the Lord Jesus cautions them in verse um, 25, 26. He says, verily, verily, I say unto you, you seek me not because you saw the miracle, but because you ate the loaves. He says, do not labor for meat which perisheth, but for meat which endures unto everlasting life. The people 
of Christ's day, they followed him because they had a meal. They didn't follow him because they were spiritually fed. So this is the great difference, you see. Now, the ministry of the Lord Jesus, it appeared to be very successful when it was actually um, not successful at all. Not because it was Christ's fault, but because the people were shallow. They were shallow in their thinking. And uh, they, 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 um, they say, well, our fathers ate manna in the wilderness and he gave them bread from heaven. And the Lord Jesus explains, he says, well, it's Moses that gave you bread from heaven. But my father gives you the true bread from heaven. And then he says, I am the bread of life. Okay, he that cometh to me shall never hunger. He that believeth on me shall never thirst. And this caused a great deal of offence. And the Lord Jesus pushes the analogy to the limit. He talks about those who need to eat his flesh and drink his blood. And at this, of course, a great number of the, of the people who followed him left. And they didn't follow the Lord Jesus anymore. Many people left the Lord and didn't follow him anymore. And the disciples said, this is a hard saying. Who can hear it? Now, they didn't mean hard in terms of hard to understand. Of course, they had misunderstood, but that isn't the point. They were saying this is a hard saying because it is hard to accept. Um, but the Lord Jesus comes right the way down to... Um, to verse 67 and he says this then said Jesus to the twelve will you also go away you see this was crunch time were they going to forsake the Lord Jesus because he'd said things that were hard for them to accept well Peter speaks for them all he says Lord to whom shall we go you have the words of eternal life and we believe and are sure that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And that's my password for today. Wonderful confession. A confession made on behalf of them all. He says, he says, we believe, verse 69, we believe and are sure that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. God bless you. Great to speak to you and look forward to speaking to you again tomorrow. Bye for now.